guys, welcome back to the BMW Vlog YouTube channel and welcome to Miramar, France. We're actually near the BMW secret facility and I have here with me Stefan. He's in charge of the new BMW X3 G45 because today we are driving a prototype X3. We're not gonna focus too much today on the specs of the car. Of course, you can't see the design from the outside because it's camouflage, but instead we'll focus on the driving dynamics of the car. So we have two cars today to test Stefan, right? So we have a new X3 plug-in hybrid and then we'll have an M Performance car. BMW won't tell us which one it is, but I can tell it's probably the X3 M50. We'll talk about that a little bit later. We're in the plug-in hybrid version, and we want to see how the suspension, the steering, and everything else has changed compared to the current generation, I guess, X3. So maybe walk me through some of the changes that you've done to the car. Uh, we changed uh, the roll bar on the front and rear. We changed the uh, rubber mount on the roll bars and the uh, roll bar mounts to the body on okay. the front and rear. So we get stiffer mounts and the function of the robots will be more initially and you get more support. So if you translate this to like a normal customer, let's say somebody buys the car and says, okay, how does it compare to the current model? How would you translate this? More comfortable ride at the lower end of the settings, stiffer and sportier ride at the highest end of the settings? It's both. It's sporty and comfort. It could be sporty and, and comfort because you get um, you get initially support when you have a roll movement of the body and you don't need the stiff roll bar itself um, because you get the support of uh, out of the mounts and the rubbers on the roll bar. Okay, so when you started this project, right, you're always giving an engineering brief. What was that engineering brief? To improve the current generation, to refine it in different ways? What was your starting point basically with the car? Yeah, we tried to uh, improve the, the, the current model, the G01, and so we changed uh, the rubber on the roll bars, as I said, as I mentioned, and we changed, um, we have a new steering system on the front, it's an EPS upper belt-driven steering system, um, which can handle higher loads, um, so we, we are able to change the kinematic and elastic kinematic as well. So that translates into, like, as I feel right now, a little bit more feedback in the steering. The handling of the car when you're cornering, you have a more, initial, a more intuitive feeling and you're more connected to the, to the front axle and to the car. With all the components that we have, uh, we can uh, influence the steering angle, uh, what you need for the for cornering in the car and how the car um, behaves to your input of the, of the steering. And we've also talked a little bit earlier today about the fact that the car has the adaptive suspension so it essentially can adapt based on whatever input is getting from the wheels and you mentioned something about the 10 milliseconds that the the processor basically the ecu is able to compute and adjust the car basically based on that right yes okay i guess there is a little bit more you know i was talking to stefan in, in the back here grundov we're talking about the steering feedback yes there is a little bit more still feels a little bit artificial you know uh, slightly but if I recall the previous generation yeah, I would say there is a little bit more feedback in it so I'm curious to see when we switch to the sport mode oh, that's switch? Gonna, yeah let's switch let's see oh, yeah, in this mode. okay gotcha yeah so a little bit heavier a little bit heftier you can see the inputs are a little bit shorter in sport mode yeah I mean the car clearly a lot more responsive steering feedback get a lot more hefty in the car keep in mind it's not the M performance car the M50 with or cylinder doing the works. <laughs> <laughs> as I said, it's plug-in hybrid, so it uses the B48 engine in combination with an electric motor. Uh, we don't know the power output. I'm assuming it's similar to what we're getting today, maybe with a small bump, just because the car got a little bit heavier and a little bit bigger. Uh, but overall, it's your typical B48 experience. I'm also driving a European version, so the sound it's even more neutered compared to the US one because of the OPF. So that always makes a huge difference, especially on the six cylinder, which I'll drive a little bit later. But the experience is kind of the same, right? It's the B48, it takes a little bit of time to build up, but once it gets into the bright power band, the torque band, then kind of pulls, but really your typical behavior. You might have seen also the steering wheel here. We haven't talked about this. I don't know yet if it's the full the, the final design, but it's essentially the same one that you're getting in the iX. So flat top, flat bottom compared to the i5, which only has the flat one right here, I believe. So I guess if this one stays, this is it. 
Uh, it's interesting. I, I got used to it in the BMW iX. As far as the transmission, once again, it's really your ZF 8-speed. You know, I'm happy that BMW is using this in the uh, Clark-based cars because I'm not a huge fan of the DCT that's in the X1 Max 2, for example. It's not as great as the ZF1, so it's always nice to see that the rear wheel-based BMWs will keep this because it's really a very refined transmission very precise, very smooth shifts. I mean, honestly, with any engine. So once again, here we go, straight line. As you can see, once the engine gets going, it's going. All right, so as we're getting close to Mirama, where we're gonna go swap into the X3 M50, as I said, once again, that's the car that's gonna replace the M40i, essentially the same engine and all of that. Uh, let me just kind of wrap it up. Overall, I guess it's a it's a good car. I've always liked the X3, honestly. It's been one of the best selling cars in the US. Always recommend it to people because it's a good value proposition for us there. I'm not sure about the pricing in Europe, but in the US it's always been priced correctly, especially against the competitors. So they've been selling quite a few of them. Unfortunately, I can tell you right now that this car, it's not coming to the US. So um, just like with the previous generation, we're not getting the X3 plug-in hybrid. I will interview later uh, Nikolai Martin, the head of the Tola integration, Tola platform at BMW, and then we'll try to find out why it's not coming. But we are getting the M Performance version, the MPA, and then I'm assuming we will get the base X3, XDrive 30i, whatever that's gonna be called, which essentially uses still the P48 engine without the plug-in hybrid. And then of course, we will get an iX3 version, which is new iClasse in 2026, completely different platform, architecture, all of that. So we'll talk about that later, but for now, Thanks, Stefan, for the drive. Thanks for the input, guys. Uh, we'll have a lot more things coming up with the M Performance car, so don't go anywhere, and I will see you in the next one.